I recently did a top 10 most overrated JRPGs video, and I figured to counteract the potential negativity, I'd love to do a top 10 underrated and underplayed JRPGs video as well. So here we are. If you enjoy JRPG content, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all so you won't miss the next video. My goal is to try and get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I don't know how possible that is, but I'm gonna do my best to get there. Now let's begin. Number 10. I know, I know, the Final Fantasy series, especially the mainline games, aren't exactly obscure or anything. But that's why Final Fantasy V is so low here at the number 10 spot. I honestly feel like this game gets constantly overlooked by so many other games in the series. To me, if you don't count Final Fantasy Tactics, Final Fantasy V is the third best mainline game. It took the job class system introduced to the franchise in Final Fantasy III, and I'd say pretty much perfected it. It's also got a great story that doesn't always take itself too seriously, and never gets overly convoluted or loaded with plot holes like some later games in the series. Final Fantasy V is by far the funnest Final Fantasy to play, so if you missed out on it, this is me telling you to go back and play this bad boy. Trust me, you'll have a blast. Number 9 As you'll see even more later on in this video, Level 5 was cracking out instant classics back on the PS2. Rogue Galaxy was part Star Wars, part Pirates of the Caribbean, and part Final Fantasy. It had a fantastic story, great planets to explore, and a fantastic cast of characters. Now, I would agree that this game hasn't aged quite as well as some others on this list, mainly because some of the dungeons and towers are massive and get super repetitive. <coughs> Gladius Towers! <coughs> Does this game have its issues? Yeah, but for a while, this was actually my favorite game, and it's still a great game to come back to after all these years, which is why it's here at number 9. Number 8 As a huge fan of the original Final Fantasy, I loved Final Fantasy Origin Stranger of Paradise, or as I like to call it, Stranger Danger Paradise. This game was a very poorly received and marketed attempt at a Final Fantasy Souls-like. I really enjoyed the gameplay and how each and every job class played very differently from one another, allowing you to completely change your gameplay experience whenever you liked. The characters were a bit dull in my opinion, but the overall story was actually really well done. I honestly believe that the multiple twists in this game's story, and the fact that they couldn't possibly advertise what the game really was, without completely ruining the twists and plot, are what held this game back so much. I won't say too much as not to spoil things for anyone, but let's just say it was really nice to be able to visit noticeable Final Fantasy locations in full high definition. It felt so good exploring the fire cavern from Final Fantasy VIII and looking out the windows of the lunar whale from Final Fantasy IV in a fully HD environment. If you haven't gotten the chance and are even just barely able to play action RPGs like myself, I recommend grabbing this game the next time it's on sale and giving it a try. You might be surprised. Number 7 I'm not a big tactical RPG guy, in fact with the exception of Final Fantasy Tactics, Tactics Ogre Reborn, and Tactics Ogre The Night of Lotus, I'd say I pretty much hate tactical RPGs. Well, one other exception to this is Vandal Hearts on the original PlayStation. Vandal Hearts had a really well done story, and its races and classes had a bit of a rock paper scissors based strategy to them. Certain types were super effective against others, making plotting your way down the battlefield a bit more fun and exciting. You've got to better plan out your troops and your means of attack differently depending on what you're going up against and the combat didn't seem to drag on forever like most tactical RPGs seem to. For all these reasons, plus the juicy twists that show up in the story and the fact that not every mission is just defeat all the dudes to win, Vandal Hearts was a nice take on the tactical RPG genre and deserves its place at number 7. Number 6 What did I say earlier about level 5 cracking out the hits on PS2? Dark Cloud 2 is an absolute masterpiece and is very likely my pick as the best PlayStation 2 game of all time. Taking everything they've learned from the first Dark Cloud and enhancing it tenfold, Dark Cloud 2 has everything you could ever want from an action RPG. It's got tons of great areas to explore, fantastic minigames, and a super involved crafting system. I love the characters and story too. I feel like this game has everything I loved about Rogue Galaxy, but done in a slightly better way, making it age much better in the long run. 
If you're ever looking for a classic action RPG that won't disappoint, you can turn to Dark Cloud 2 by level 5. Actually, I'd like to give an honorable mention to Nino Kuni on the PS3 and modern consoles as well. That game was another truly magnificent work of art by Level 5 and Studio Ghibli, and likely the best game on the PS3. I just didn't have room for it on this list. Number 5 NES JRPGs can be rough at times, and Sweet Home is no exception. So I went into this game a little bit afraid, which is honestly fitting because Sweet Home on the Famicom was the game that inspired and essentially created the survival horror genre. That's right, Capcom, the same company that brought you the Resident Evil franchise almost a decade later, created the genre back in the late 1980s with Sweet Home. In Sweet Home, you control a film crew investigating an old mansion owned by a famous artist who had mysteriously disappeared. Without spoiling too much, you instantly get trapped inside and have to both find your way out and get to the bottom of what's been going on in this creepy-ass mansion. In this straight-up turn-based JRPG, you've got to manage your party and items properly as certain characters and items are needed to do certain things within the mansion. What's cool is that you can split up the party however you see fit and control all the different parties you create. Then, if shit's going down and you need backup, you're able to walk a nearby party to the battle in order to help out with the battle once they arrive. I could go on forever about this game and how I was completely blown away by how incredible it was, especially for a Famicom game. But yeah, if you haven't checked this one out yet, do yourself a favor and slap it in your backlog for like October or something. Number 4 Dragon Quest X is such a great game, and it's a shame that it was never officially released outside of Japan. Thankfully, I've made a video guide on how to play this game in English for free on PC, so check that shit out if you're interested. Anyway, Dragon Quest X, despite being an MMO, is always a Dragon Quest game first and foremost. Think of it like a bigger, better version of Dragon Quest IX, where you can play with all your friends online, and if they aren't online, you can hire them as NPC party members to continue on your adventures. The next time they log in, they'll receive the golden EXP they would have received for being in your party as well. The story of the original Dragon Quest X is really well done, starting you off in different areas, depending on which race you choose to be near the beginning. After the first few towns main stories, you can then complete the other stories in any order you'd like, making everyone's experience a little bit different. The bosses all have difficulty settings that you're given the choice between whenever you reach them, so that the game stays relatively balanced no matter what order you've chosen. If you enjoyed Dragon Quest IX, you really owe it to yourself to play this magnificent MMO. I'll have a link to my guide below, and feel free to reach out to me if you need any help. This game deserves to be experienced by more JRPG fans. By the way, did I mention it even has turn-based combat and monster taming? Yeah. It's here at number 4 for a reason. Number 3 I briefly mentioned Tactics Ogre Reborn when I was talking about my general dislike of tactical RPGs, but this game deserves any praise it gets. If you even slightly enjoyed Final Fantasy Tactics, I highly recommend checking this game out. The original PS1 version was hard as fuck. But thankfully, Tactics Ogre Reborn has been rebalanced and remastered. The classes are all really well done, as are the different monsters and races you can play as. Obviously, some characters are better than others, but for the most part, it seems more balanced than Final Fantasy Tactics in that aspect. Each class is completely viable, and depending on what you choose for your party, every playthrough is unique. Speaking of which, there are multiple intersecting story points where your decisions and playstyle changes the actual story, giving this game a ton of replay value. I feel like everyone who has played this game absolutely loves it, so I suppose I'd chalk this entry up to one of those games that is just straight up underplayed. Number 2 Dragon Quest VII is a game that so many people overlook because of its length and graphical style. The original PS1 version definitely had some pacing issues, especially at the beginning where you can go literal hours before having your first monster encounter. This is because of Dragon Quest VII's incredible story. You see, Dragon Quest VII is kind of like Chrono Trigger, but if the things you did in the past made a huge impact on the present. The characters start out on the only island in the entire world, known as Estard Island. And as you stumble back to the past and prevent countries and kingdoms from being wiped off the face of the map, each from 
from different well-written perils and stories, you'll then notice them appearing back in the present day with their own adventures to explore then as well. Dragon Quest VII is truly the high point of the Dragon Quest series' individual storytelling, and has some of the best, most heartwarming, and heart-wrenching stories ever told. If you're a fan of JRPGs or the Dragon Quest series and haven't given this game a go, make time for it and enjoy the ride. I will say that the PS1 original has quite a bit more content overall, and for myself anyway, it usually clocks in at around 145 hours. Whereas the 3DS remake is much more streamlined, but missing content took me about 73 hours to beat. Either way, you're in for one heck of an adventure in probably the most overlooked Dragon Quest game. Number 1 Most of my viewers are already aware of my love for the Dragon Quest series. If you're like me and you've played the entire series and most of its spin-offs over and over again, but are looking for something with a similar charm and vibe, I've got just the thing for you. Lunar 1 and 2 are absolute incredible games. I played them for the first time a few years ago and can't recommend them enough. They're captivating stories that take place one after the other, their memorable and lovable cast of characters, and the great battle system and 90s anime cutscenes just seal the deal. I can't say too much about the story without dropping some big ol' spoiler bombs, but prepare for two amazing journeys across this fantastic world. Now, there are a few different versions of these games, but I would recommend playing the PS1 remakes. The original Sega CD versions are great in their own right, but Lunar Silver Story Complete and Lunar 2 Eternal Blue Complete are the definitive way to play them in my honest opinion. The PS1 remakes are definitely more difficult than the originals, but it's worth it for all the quality of life improvements, updates to the story that better flesh things out, and just the overall look of the games. Please Please add these to your list of games to play and prioritize the shit out of them. You won't be disappointed. Just be sure to avoid the third game in the series, Lunar Dragon Song, on the DS at all costs. That game is probably the worst JRPG ever made and is a massive corn ridden shit stain on this otherwise amazing series. So there you have it, my top 10 most underrated and underplayed JRPGs of all time. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all to help the channel grow to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Let me know some of your top underrated and underplayed JRPGs in the comments, and be sure to check out my top 10 most overrated JRPGs video as well. Thanks so much for watching, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next one.